Hi, I'm Mary Lou Jepson, and I'm your moderator on the Brain Computer Interface panel. We're going to be talking about the future of Brain Computer Interface, but that future is already here. Let this video roll. Impressive. James made that video here in Riyadh in his spare time. James Johnson, the one, the only, um, is a former registered nurse who was in a rollover accident that left him paralyzed from the neck down in 2017. He spent three months in a medically induced coma before ultimately deciding to use an experimental brain computer interface. He's one of approximately a few dozen people who have had this implant made by BlackRock Neurotex chips and which connects the brain to the computer. And, and um, today you're going to hear about his experiences. And first, as a way for the audience to get to know you, um, where are you from? And um, how long have you had your implant? So, uh, I'm from California. Excuse me just a sec, get a drink. Uh, uh, thank you. I'm from California and I've had my brain implants for five years so far. Uh, and um, it's been a, 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 a wonderful experience to be able to link in with the computer to be able to com control various um, technologies such as computers, robotic limbs, um, driving, and um, as you will see later on during this session, me actually driving a car on a, on a test track. And from the comfort of my living room, while the car is 2,000 miles away um, from where I, I am, and I will be able to control the vehicle through a Wi-Fi connection with just my thoughts. So it's pretty exciting. So I've had brain surgery. It was the hardest thing I ever did. What was your decision-making process to, in having brain surgery to join this experimental study? Well, as a uh, registered nurse in the States, I was always uh, accustomed to giving to the community uh, through my job, and just my personality was 
one who always gave back. And um, when I had the accident and lost the use of my um, limbs, I thought, okay, well, what can I do at this point? So when I was approached with the opportunity to uh, take part in this experiment, uh, I kind of just jumped at the chance. I felt that it was the only way that I could give back um, again. And um, so I had no reservations about doing the surgery to get implanted. So I've heard you say that the brain-computer interface feels intuitive. Can you tell us, describe what you're imagining so you're able to paint, control cars, and do all these things you're able to do so intuitively? Right. So I've been asked uh, many times about what is it exactly that you're thinking or how does it work, right? because most people can't wrap their heads around um, the ability to move objects with your mind. So what I, have, what I have people do is imagine moving your ears, right? I tell you, move your ears, and what you do instinctively is your tongue goes to the roof of your mouth and you try to push in order to move your ears. Well, that's exactly the type of effort I have to put forward in order to move an object or move a cursor on the screen. That's interesting, and you're moving more than that, and I think we have a video queued up of you doing the first time in the world with anybody, with a brain-computer interface, what are you doing? So, in the previous video, I showed you some gameplay. And um, imagine our brains are firing off neurons billions and billions of times throughout whatever we're doing. When I'm doing the gameplay, imagine the technology is interpreting, BlackRock's technology is interpreting all that neural activity and creating an algorithm which in turn can be applied to an external device like a PlayStation controller. So in that video, or I'm sorry, in the video that you're gonna watch right now, is you're gonna see exactly how we're applying the Black Rocks technology in order to um, get me to uh, uh, have the capable, capability of driving a, a car. Okay, let's see that video. And we're gonna do a series of demos now in which James is gonna remotely control the steering wheel. James is in Los Angeles, California, or close enough to it. <laughs> and he's now controlling the vehicle that is in Michigan. And now, James, turn left. Okay, that's good. How you feeling? Feels pretty good. Controlling a car with my thoughts. It's so cool. And maybe tell us what you're trying to do as you do it. All right. I'm gonna go forward. <laughs> Slide to the right. And slightly to the left. Good. There you go. Perfect. Nice. And even further turn, that's a very nice turn. There you go. And pointing straight back, lap, lap number three. Oh, that was beautiful, James. Very smooth. Thank you. He's going to whip it. Oh! Oh! <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, James, um, you already hired this driver. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. It's, I have yeah, no idea, James. I, this is so long in the making, and this is really, honestly, this is a moment like sort of uh, first man on the moon. Nobody's ever done that. This is 
That's it's awesome. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Never expected this to happen. So it's amazing, all that with two chips that are a, a small bed of nails, a millimeter and a half in depth that just sit on the top of your cortex, all that. So having lived with this for five years, what's your wish list for what's next for BCI and what you want to do? What I um, really want to get from this uh, experiment is an external device, an exoskeletal device that will bridge the healthy portion of my spine across the damaged area and reconnect to the other half of my spine so that we can take those um, neurons and reconnect so that I can, again, be able to move the rest of my body. That's what I wish. Okay, so BlackRock Neuro's got a lot to do. And with that, should I fade to the chairman of BlackRock Neuro and the founder of Aprian, who's a, a, a large fund who's founded and created um, several multi-billion dollar biotech companies. And BlackRock Neuro is well on its way to do that. Um, he's the investor and chairman. This is um, Christian. And um, as one of the world's leading investors in neurotech and brain-computer interface, what got you excited about, about the, the technology? Okay, well, it's very simple. You saw the video. <laughs> so it's like, it's definitely from all of my companies the most, uh, in a good way, crazy ones, exciting ones. Um, yeah, I think there's, I don't need to explain it. This is it's fucking cool. But it's risky. Thank you for doing it. It's hard. There's not enough money in this, clearly. And look at the results with just what's been done so far. It's amazing. Meaning risk is always a definition. Meaning in, uh, how I see BlackRock is actually very simple. Like at the moment already, by the way, because it's reality, it's not that we, that I, we had to invest to make it happen. Like James has it, uh, his implants since five years. The sort of longest patient has it since seven years. So when I met the company, four years ago, this was already there. So this is not a vision, that's reality. So our near-term plan is with uh, brain-computer interfaces, you can solve, as you see next to me, or very simple to explain, some of the most sort of pressing problems for people, from people who are quadriplegic. We have one other very fascinating patient. Uh, I don't know if you know here what ALS is. ALS is a neuro disease where, or a disease where uh, over time your entire muscles in your body fail. Uh, at the very end, these people are lying there, uh, can't even speak because you need muscles to speak, but are completely mentally there. So it's practically you locked in your body f for the rest of your life. Um, and we have one patient who is unfortunately already in this end phase where he can't even speak, and he has a chip from BlackRock in his brain, and he's thinking, and the computer, the loudspeaker of the computer, is speaking for him. So we're able to transfer, you would call it telepathy in other times, his thoughts with a chip to a computer which is uh, speaking for him. The next thing is we're working on cochlear implants because we're also able to transfer noise or speech or whatever you hear directly in your brain, so to help people who can't hear anymore because current hearing devices are pretty bad actually. I don't know whoever has listened or has, you can get the sound bite what people hear with a hearing device. It's not good. Um, and give us five or seven more years and we will be able to send thoughts from one brain directly to the other because we have both sides of the equation uh, already. So what we're doing at the moment, coming to risk, it's already there, uh, we're building a medical device company who will solve some of the most pressing issues. If we succeed with that, that should be at least a multi-billion dollar business. So the big vision though, I believe in 10 plus years from now, so not that long, because that's a short blip in time, um, we all will have brain computer interfaces because why stop at healing or curing something? Why not also empower us yeah, or sort of improve ourselves. Why, for example, stop giving people just their hearing back? What is if we all could have super hearing? 
Yeah, and we can, because like obviously once I can sort of send noise to your brain, I can also say, I can send noise you hear 100 meters away. So practically suddenly that opens up so many fascinating ideas how we can sort of enhance uh, our brain. And then in the very last iteration, uh, what I want to build actually, and I don't know who's here, I heard in the former session, Star Trek, uh, who, who has read the book or seen the movie, by the way, super recommendable, Ready Player One, uh, which is one of the big sort of movies or books for gamers. Ultimately, what the goal of gaming is, or the goal of entertainment, you want to create hyper-realistic worlds. So you want to create a holodeck uh, in Star Trek Enterprise. Uh, but it turns out, that's my belief at least, the holodeck is not a place, it's actually your brain. Because, last sentence, why do you think you're sitting here and watching us on stage? The only reason is because you're seeing us, one sensoric input, your bum is feeling the seat, second one, you feel the air conditioning, so the breeze on your skin, every single reason why you believe, by the way, when I'm actually challenging if you sit here, why you're sitting here is the summary of your sensoric input which creates the illusion that you hear. Uh, we have already proven it's simpler to take information out of the brain, which we call reading, but with the hearing device, we have already proven that we can put information back into the brain, which we call writing in the brain. So once we are able, and that's maybe 20 years from now, to fully sort of create sensoric input in your brain directly without your sensoric organs, I can create any illusion in your brain which you want to. So this will be the final stage of hyper-realistic games. You will push a button, yeah, and you're going to be in any place, in any time, in any fantasy world, yeah, and it will feel and it will be completely realistic because it's nothing else than what you have at the moment. Your brain creates the illusion of this session because your sensoric input. So ultimately, yeah, we're going to be like an apple or like a oasis in, in, brain, uh, in, um, in Ready Player One, sort of the, I don't want to use the word matrix because it's so negative connotated, but like sort of the, 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 the technology which empowers gazillions of worlds we can create in our brain. And what about the memory enhancement? Well, I said it yesterday, that's not so complicated. We're working on that. It's, it's again, not so complicated is 10 years away. But again, I always say my class reunion was 25 years ago. I was there some months. Uh, and it was like, okay, this was like yesterday. So 20 years, 10 years, that's not a long time frame. It shouldn't be a big problem to add memory capacity uh, to our brain. As I said, like, I can go through hundreds of ideas we have. What will we do with the memory enhancement? I mean, do we ever forget anything? First, again, first of all, it's just like great, like take a student, like I think I, I need to go to any university. Yeah, uh, memories, like actually, I believe because like, again, reality just, in, again, I think reality is an illusion, but like, in any case, reality is just a second because it's this moment and then the second before is already a memory. So the more I think the whole life is about collecting memories, so the more uh, the merrier. I'll give you one other very practical example. Like in some years from now, we should already be able, because again, we have the ALS patients, which is sending thoughts. We have the hearing patients, which are receiving uh, information. Imagine... Uh, okay, fair words, you're all bosses, but like imagine you would ever in your life sit again uh, in a job interview uh, and you get asked a very difficult question and you don't want to look foolish and actually you can't pull out your phone and Google it because that would be very obvious. So in five, seven years from now, you might just think and might say, hey Google, in your thoughts, can you please help me and give me that information and you're going to hear the answer directly in your brain, Google will say, yeah, well, this is... Okay, yeah. that's great. We have 30 seconds left, and I think we should give the last word to James. I hear there's a $40 million prize for video gaming coming up in Saudi Arabia. Are you going to compete? I would love to. I think that we're pretty close in my control. Uh, definitely gives me a competitive edge. All right, last word. And thank you so much. The future of brain-computer interface is here. I'm getting better. <laughs>